Hi and welcome to the video. I'm Dame and this is Dame Over. And in today's video, I've got a bit of a sneaky tactic to share with you guys. It's one that I've got a love-hate relationship with. I'll give you a little hint. Boop. Yep, there it is. It's the spawn beacon. And we're going to kick things off by putting out a trigger warning right now because some of you are probably going to get mad, but this is one of the best tactics to use to pull off those huge flanks and bag multi-kills, which I found especially effective playing front lines. So in this video, I'll give you my own tips and tricks on how to use the spawn beacon to really take advantage of positioning your squad behind enemy lines. So if you find this video useful or entertaining, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're new around here and you want to keep up to date with even more Battlefield 5 content, then make sure you've hit that subscribe button too. So I'm going to start things off by saying the way I'm going to explain how to use the spawn beacon is not a camping tactic. I'm actively telling you right now that if you do choose to use the spawn beacon, do not camp. It's not how you're supposed to play Battlefield 5 and it ruins the fun for the rest of the lobby if you're just laying down in a bush waiting for someone to run by. So use the spawn beacon by all means, but please, please, please PTFO and join in with the fun. Now that's out of the way. How do you unlock the use of the spawn beacon? Well, you need to get to scout rank eight. Some of the clips you'll see are from me trying to level up to unlock it, in fact. It is your secondary gadget replacing either the anti-personnel mines or the sniper decoy if you have that unlocked as well. And what does it do? Well, I'll show you. If you place the spawn beacon anywhere on the map, as I'm doing here, and you are killed, if you return to the map overview screen rather than to camming your squad mates in third person, you'll see an extra spawn point which is now available to you and any other member of your squad until it is either destroyed or you replace it with a new one somewhere else on the map. This has a whole host of possibilities attached to it, some of them super cheesy and annoying. If you check out my mate Modest Pelican's latest video, you'll see one of the more annoying ways to use it in action. I've linked the video in the description to make that easy for you. But what I want to talk about is how to tactically and purposefully use the spawn beacon to help your team grab a win. Now, I'm going to be talking in terms of front lines, as I think it's particularly useful in this game mode. But the spawn beacon can be applied to most, if not all, of the other game modes and be very good in those two if it's used correctly. The footage you've been seeing is all just after using the spawn beacon so you can see how much of an advantage it can give you if you're positioned right. But this particular clip is from a Frontlines game on Twisted Steel and this is where good positioning and map knowledge can be very useful as well. I know that the C objective in the centre of the map can be flanked on the right hand side. I've found some cover, namely this tree and some rocks, to put the spawn beacon behind. Now my squad and I can take advantage of shooting the enemy in the flank while they try and hold off the rest of our team making a frontal assault. Now this is an ongoing theme as you'll see in the gameplay. I do my best to find a protected and hidden area, place the spawn beacon, jump into the action and if I die use the spawn beacon to get an immediate flank on the enemy team. It makes being shot at straight off spawn very unlikely unless someone's actively hunting your squad down. You're very likely to pick up a couple of kills at least before the enemy team can even work out you're there and more importantly it gives you a way into the objectives that isn't easily available to everyone else. You don't have to run for two and a half minutes before reaching where you want to get to, only to be killed by someone covering that particular lane, and gone are the days where you're forced to run in an open field for extended periods of time. Right, well what makes the spawn beacon so good in front lines? Well, if you've played it before, you'll know that this game mode sees each team fighting for control of one objective at a time, pushing forwards or backwards over the whole of the map, until the final part where you have to plant bombs. Anyway, it's in the capturing and defending of objectives where the spawn beacon really earns its keep, and for a few reasons. Firstly, if you can plant your beacon within the capture area of an objective, you can start capturing immediately or contest it immediately as well. It's a great way to get more numbers on the objective quickly and give the rest of your team time to turn up and reinforce your squad and again if you can position it intelligently taking into account where the enemy team will be looking the location of the fortifications and the cover on the objective etc etc you can catch them sleeping as they're looking the wrong way waiting for your team to start the assault Secondly, it's an instant flank manoeuvre. I mentioned it before, but if you can place it near the paths less travelled, then the spawn beacon has done all of the work for you. You can spawn in, wait for your squad, and start wreaking havoc behind enemy lines. Again, it's particularly useful in front lines, as most players will play with blinkers on and don't even check or protect the flanks, so you're highly likely to pick up some kills each time you spawn in a near contested area. 
Thirdly, it can be placed almost anywhere. There aren't many surfaces I've found that won't allow the spawn beacon to be put on, so if the other team do get wise to your tactics, you can just take your next spawn beacon and put it somewhere else before you push in and embarrass them yet again. It can also be used as a bit of a clutch gadget. If your team's being pushed back off an objective and being killed, placing a spawn beacon will massively reduce the time it takes to get players back on attacking or defending an objective. It can often be the difference between pushing forward or being pushed back. So, what are the downsides to using the spawn beacon? Well, you're limited to using one at a time, seems fair to me, or you could run up a ton of personal spawn points on the map. It makes a hell of a loud noise when it's down, and this is so the enemy team can actually have a chance of finding and destroying it. It's just a really loud white noise sort of thing. And one of the only sound cues that seems to function as intended in Battlefield 5, to be honest, it can also tempt people to just sit near their beacon and camp, which is obviously really boring and unhelpful to everyone on their team. Remember, guys, do not do it. But most importantly, the worst part is you have to play as the scout class. What? No, anything but that, I hear you scream. Yeah, unfortunately, friends, it's true. Someone in your squad will have to make the ultimate sacrifice and play as the scout class so you can all benefit from the spawn beacon. I'm, of course, joking and only talking from a console player's perspective. I think it's pretty unanimous amongst console players that the scout class is objectively the worst one. But anyway, it's a scout gadget. So if you want to use it, then you'll need to put in a little bit of a grind for the benefit of your squad and your team. Now, I started using this tactic after having had a squad do exactly what I've described to you guys in a game, and I have to say it works really, really well for front lines. They kept my squad busy the, the entire time, almost, because we were searching for their spawn beacon, and they were forcing us to stay back and not be able to help our team push forward. A real pain in the bum. But anyway, my squad bagged a bunch of kills because our positioning was given a little advantage over everyone when I was using the spawn beacon, so I'd highly suggest giving it a go yourself, and if you do, make sure you get in the comments and tell me about it that would be fantastic so now it's time to say a quick thank you to my day operatives those of you guys that are helping to support the channel through patreon it's because of you guys that i'm able to make content as often as i do and hopefully in the near future i'll be able to do this full time with a bit more support so if you want to become a patron yourself i've left a link in the description there'll be one in the pinned comment too it'll take you straight to the patreon page where if you'd like to you can help support the channel from as little as one dollar a month so if you had a good time make sure you hit that like button if you're new around here hit the subscribe button too don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications so you don't miss any future posts and as always feel free to share this video with whoever and wherever you like and until next time that's game over peace